To discuss this further, we want to bring in and welcome back columnist and former advisor at the Israeli Prime Minister's office, Ruthie Bloom. Blum, I want to thank you again for being here, uh, for joining us. And you know, it's been seven months of ongoing fighting. Many people are just wondering, you know, when is it going to end, but how? Well, it can't end until we destroy Hamas and return the hostages, okay? That's the short answer. Uh, in the meantime, we're working towards that goal, that goal. And if the Biden administration uh, weren't constantly tying our hands, we probably would have been able to do it sooner. Uh, at the moment, for example, we are operating in Rafa, but in, with precision. Uh, very carefully and with precision. And uh, it didn't help that the International uh, Court of Justice uh, said that we had to s cease operations in Rafa. So at the moment, we're, uh, we're doing a delicate dance, and that has to do with Washington, mm -hmm. predominantly. You know, a lot of people wonder and think if Israel could fully eliminate Hamas. Obviously, that is a, a big-ticket item. Is it possible? It's not possible to eliminate every Hamas terrorist, okay? There are still ISIS terrorists in the world as well. The issue is eliminating Hamas's military and political capabilities in Gaza and elsewhere. Of course, there are always going to be terrorists. Um, you know, that there are terrorists all over the world, and especially uh, since these ones are backed by the Iranian regime, um, you know, it's not likely to disappear. But yes, it is definitely possible to eliminate their stronghold on, a, on territory. You know, when we take a look at some of the video that we see here coming into our newsroom uh, and what's happening in Tel Aviv, I know that you've got your finger on the pulse of what's going on. Uh, what's the mood like right now? You know, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said that the public is becoming more and more divided. Um, but the division is, you know, it's interesting. We all agree. We, our hearts are all broken for the hostages, for all the people slaughtered on October 7th, and for our soldiers risking their lives and many dying in, in this war. Okay, we are all in agreement. We're certainly all in agreement that those hostages have to be returned, the dead ones and the live ones, especially the live ones, but also the dead ones. Um, the argument is over the best way to do it. And many of the, the families of the hostages, not all of them, many of the families of the hostages um, are, have this sense, and we can understand them because they're desperate, uh, have a sense that somehow Netanyahu is not doing enough in negotiations with those bloodthirsty terrorists, mm -hmm. by the way, brokered by Egypt and Qatar, which also, that's for another broadcast, okay? Their part in all of this. Um, and the fact is that it's Hamas has no interest in returning the hostages. Hamas is the one saying, the only way you're going to get hostages, and they don't even say all of them, is by ending the war and leaving us in power. And we can't do that, okay? It's not a negotiation here. You're talking, and unfortunately, Hamas, is receiving, it has good reason to suspect or to hope that it'll be successful because the international community is turning on Israel. And Washington, our best friend, is saying, you know, hold off, uh, be careful, and even hinting that we're um, possibly not allowing enough humanitarian aid into, Gaza, into the Gaza Strip or that we are killing too many civilians, all of which are lies. You know, some of these videos we've seen just, just this week uh, are just so horrific uh, of the hostages. It's just, it's terrible to watch, but we've got to keep our eye on it. And as we do that, we're also looking at Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, possibly losing even more support. Uh, where do you square that right now? Well, look, you know, it's hard to tell. You understand, you're in an election year right now. I mean, it's about six months before your election. Mm -hmm. We're not in an election year. So all of these polls that are being taken are sort of, you know, from one minute to the next. If there were an election, would he lose support or not? And I may say that there are different pollsters in Israel. And actually, the pollster, um, the company that got the most closely got the election results, the last election results, correct, and the ones before that. We had several rounds of elections. 
before uh, this this current government was formed, um, has doesn't say that Netanyahu is losing so much support. Yes, he's losing some support. And according to that poll, if we held an election today, we would have another impasse. It would not be a clear-cut victory for the anti-Netanyahu camp. And all, you know, and all I can say is how, whatever your po political position is in this country, and I say that to everybody, friend and foe and political rival alike, to have an election while we are in the middle of this horrific war that was imposed on us by these bloodthirsty sexual predators um, is, would be insane. Okay, Ruthie Bloom, we've got to leave it right there. Uh, thank you so much for your perspective. As always, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me.